So there was the trust, you know, there was the sense yeah. that this thing was gonna, gonna work. And you know, the beauty of TikTok as well is it was a low risk. Welcome to Made for TikTok Talking Creative, a show featuring inspirational conversations with creative leaders who have mastered the art of producing TikTok content and continue to raise the bar for the advertising industry. I'm Jordan, Creative Agency Partnerships Lead at TikTok, and today is all about trends. Few brands on TikTok integrate more creatively into the cultural conversation than Chipotle. And the agency partner behind that work is Day One Agency. Leading the agency's creative team is Chief Creative Officer Jamie Fakowski, whose professional background extends beyond creative development with stints in publishing, print production, account management, and strategy. Thank you for joining us today, Jamie. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, it's so, it's so great to have you here. And you have such a untraditional trajectory to your to your role. I imagine that influences kind of, you know, how you lead your teams. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what that experience has been like? Yeah, I mean, you set it up. I've, I've done a little bit of everything. Uh, I began my careers in magazines. I always wanted to work in magazines kind yeah. of in school and, and growing up and had this hybrid of design and I was a bit of a writer. But for me, I, I just loved that magazines had such a unique point of view on what they wanted to say and what they wanted to give to the world. A real mm -hmm. understanding of who the audience was, of what their niche was. You know, you look at a rack of magazines and a newsstand and you kind of know the difference between everyone. Yeah. So I'd say for me, that little bit has carried a ton into creative work. Really thinking about if I'm in a feed of so much content, you know, in this case, instead of it being a horizontal rack, it's this vertical feed. Yeah. You know, what am I doing that's going to help to show up and, and differentiate from everything else that's out there? Got you. Yeah. So like, do, would you say that like, the words or the art is a little bit more like your speed. I have had different stages of my career, but I yeah. think right now it's the words, it's the idea, it's the ability to kind of nail in and focus on a point of view. You know, I, um, I went to school for design. I knew pretty quickly I was never going to be a great designer in New York. It's an incredibly competitive field, but I spoke the language. I understood what it meant to, to do design work and, you know, to communicate with great art directors and designers. So for me, that's yeah. been super helpful to build connection and relationships there. Where I've always loved is the story. You know, mm -hmm. I've always loved the idea of I've got a huge challenge. I've got a thing I'm trying to bring forward to the world. How am I going to tell that? Um, yeah. And regardless of the, the format or the place where it lives, you know, it's all about telling a good story and connecting. Which is great because, you know, you started off with your love in print and we're here today to talk to you about TikTok. So sure. it's been quite the journey since then. I want to talk a little bit about your experience at day one. Yeah. Um, you've been there for about eight years Coming or so? Up on it. Yeah, eight years. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's so impressive. I think, especially in my generation, I feel like we find so much that people move around a lot. Like what initially attracted you to day one and, you know, what, what's inspiring you to continue your commitment to the agency? Yeah, I, I got to do a little bit of my soul searching early on, you know, trying a lot of different different jobs and different experiences. A few things brought me to day one early on. So I had a relationship with, uh, you know, some of the founders initially. So I knew mm -hmm. them from a past life. I'd worked for, you know, Josh, the CEO before. Initially, you know, the, about they were about a year and change in, um, just a little bit over a year when I, I kind of came on board. And I always wanted to work for people that were willing to work as hard as I felt like I would, you know, and, and putting, you know, effort into what we were doing. And, you know, the three original partners are all some of the hardest working people I've ever worked for in my life. So I really respected that, you know, that yeah. they were going to go out and figure it out. The other part of it was, you know, they really saw the evolving media landscape and mm -hmm. saw that, you know, there was this coming together of, of PR, of social agencies, of creative agencies everybody was really trying to do the same thing, you know, and just help brands really show up in the right ways in the right places. Yeah. And there was a bit of, you know, taking down the silos and walls that you would see from agency to agency. It's like, hey, we can come in, be independent, be a secret weapon for a lot of our, our brand partners early on and build, you know, a connection with them as an agency that is not going to be as territorial, a little bit egoless in how we think and how we create. And, you know, that's been a big part of the ethos ever since. Yeah. I mean, People are the biggest the biggest factor for sure. me, at least when I'm looking for roles. I feel like in, earlier in my career, I kind of followed the company, followed brands. And then I think as I matured through my career, I started following people and leaders. Yeah. Um, it's part of the reason why I came to TikTok as well, um, because of the leadership here. So completely understand that. And that, that's great to hear. Speaking of TikTok, though. Okay. Um, Let's get into it. Yeah. Like my first question, how much time are you spending on the platform, like on a, a, any given week? 
Yeah, I think um, it, it depends on the day, but it, it's not uncommon for me to open it up and really drift into an hour or plus uh, yeah. of time on TikTok. We're doing so many different sprints, different brands, ideating on different things. It's important for me to spend enough time in there to understand everything that's, that's sort of going on and where the trends are. Also yeah. very lucky to have a team that's also spending quite a bit of time there. So, you know, I might sit down and do my sort of deep dive into what's curated for me. But what I really love is getting the TikToks that are shared over Slack or shared over email for yeah. everybody kind of talking about what they're seeing and letting that kind of, uh, you know, you, you click on one, you're watching it as a reference before, you know, you've watched, you know, five or six. So, yeah, yeah more and more it's becoming a big part of um, of my media diet, I'd say. OK, so like yeah. in terms of like the slacks that you're seeing, like or yeah. the slacks that you're seeing about TikToks, like what's popping out, like what's inspiring you in terms of like what you're seeing on the platform? It doesn't have to be brand TikToks or anything, but yeah, I'm always interested in how a brand's trying to show up and, and maybe how that's different than what they're doing in other places. But, you know, the creators and, and the kids that are really figuring out how to carve their own unique niche are the things that I'm most interested in. Yeah. Um, so it could be someone that's, um, you know, really got a unique point of view on deeper storytelling. You know, TikTok traditionally has always been, you know, iPhone only, lo-fi. I mean, that's a big part of what we produce content-wise, yeah. but I've been kind of interested to see some of that changing. You're starting to see, you know, mm -hmm. little film directors and stuff kind of popping up there, and yeah. that's been really interesting. Um, someone who can really build uh, some repetition in what they're doing, like mm. format the style, but can evolve the subject matter or the narrative or the way in which they're kind of honing in their craft is always really interesting to me. So you see a lot of creators early on that are experimenting. They're trying so many different things. And then you see yeah. when they find it, they're able to just kind of fine tune and, and build over time. That's that's always been you know super fascinating. Yeah, there's, um, I'm not sure if it came up on your For You page, but there's the, a director, his name is Darren, and his content is so great like it's it's beautifully shot first yeah. of all he's the star in all of his tiktoks and he's uh doing a monologue or talking us through a story obviously they're short form like maybe anywhere between like 60 seconds to three minutes um but seeing how like that level of craft is showing up on the platform is just really it's really nice for me to see because it's like a good mix up from kind of like your more lo-fi content that you see that you swipe through as well yeah it's nice kind of like a mixed bag at this point yeah i love that there's a creator i love samba you know samba films we've we've worked with mm -hmm. him on some some nike work in the past and, and similar you know he oftentimes is in his films uh just really beautiful obviously taking a ton of cues from more traditional filmmaking and craft there but he understands the platform and understands how to shoot for vertical so he's been blending yeah. these two worlds in a way that i think is going to change what film looks like in the future yeah so um i want to get into the work that you all are doing with uh chipotle because i mean you guys have made some hits like i mean press every like outside of TikTok has been making so much noise. And before I get into that, uh, one of the things that I noticed when I was preparing for this episode is that you all are actually the cultural agency of record for Chipotle. How does that differ from like your more traditional creative AOR relationship? We've been with Chipotle for a long time now, six plus years mm -hmm. uh, working with them. Originally brought on board as a social AOR, and this was before TikTok. So mm -hmm. I worked with them, you know, primarily in, in some of the other social platforms. And, you know, if I'm honest, back in the day, it was very traditional relationship that you'd have with the brand helping to, you know, fill the feed. You're trying to tell stories, focus on, you know, a new menu item, build a little bit of the brand heritage. There was a leadership change at Chipotle uh, a number of years ago, and, and Chris Brandt came in as the CMO and really wanted us to focus on how to utilize social as a place to build fandom, you know, to build a connection with our yeah. most trusted fans, our most important fans. And there was this shift at the moment. Chipotle was a super well-loved brand with millennials, and Gen Z was an audience that we wanted to reach and really connect with and build with. Uh, around that time was probably when we started experimenting and building with TikTok. And what we found was social was such a great platform to drive bigger cultural conversations. Mm -hmm. you, know, you could put something out on social and it could have a complete life of its own. Yeah. For the person we're trying to talk to, that is, you know, their TV. It's where they're spending the bulk of their time or where maybe they're getting the most interaction directly with the brand. So it is this place where you can push and shape and, and drive culture. Uh, yeah. So over time, our relationship with them changed, changed from being just a social partner executing, driving the same you know ideas that might be coming from from the top to really getting to drive the cultural presence of Chipotle from the ground up. 
Yeah, I think that this is probably um, one of the few times that I've heard an agency take on that role. And I love that because it's so much bigger than just the content itself. It's like, what impact is it making towards like the audience that you want to reach and like actually making sure that they're ingrained in, in culture. Speaking of culture, um, I want to talk about the corn kid. Sure. So Tariq is fantastic. He took TikTok by storm with his interview talking about his love for corn and um you know, everyone was talking about it. Millions of impressions outside of TikTok, um, press hits everywhere. And we saw a lot of brands like very early on use that viral sound mm -hmm. a lot in their brand content. And what immediately stuck out to me with Chipotle is that you took it a step further and you actually decided to partner with Tariq and have Tariq featured in an actual piece of content, an original piece of content. Um, can you talk me through like, what was the, what was the reason for doing that? Like, why not just use the sound like everyone else was doing? Yeah. I mean, to your point, we saw a ton of brands using the sound, you know, yeah. every day with Chipotle, we get together, we do a morning stand up. We try to look at what's kind of trending on our own content, what's happening in the channels, you know, what's operationally happening at the restaurants that we need to maybe know about. It's, it's us, it's Chipotle, it's all their agency partners getting together. Mm. The song had sort of taken off right after the interview did. Yeah. And we saw, you know, a number of brands using it. I really love blank, you know, the song's playing corn, but they're mixing in whatever the thing is that they yeah, kind of do. Insert your and, brand. Yeah, yeah, insert your brand here. And we just felt like, hey, over the 12 or 14 hours that was happening, it was a little bit too late, you know. For us, we're, we're looking at trends and thinking about how to be additive to the conversation versus necessarily just jumping on the format. Mm -hmm. So we didn't say, it didn't have like a, a great idea that felt like it was going to advance that trend anywhere further. We just yeah. felt like we were participating in it. As time went on, we saw Tariq show up in a cameo TikTok. Mm -hmm. So they posted that he was, you know, available if you wanted to get him to come in, do whatever. Yeah. And we just commented on it, you know, just posted a comment, uh, probably still one of our most viral comments on the platform. <laughs> and it just said, but does he love corn salsa? Mm -hmm. And it quickly rose to the top of their, their comment feed and, you know, through sort of back channeling, got in touch with Cameo, mm -hmm. realized there was an opportunity to maybe work with Tariq. He's in New York. He's available tomorrow. Would you guys want to do anything with him? Yeah. And this is, uh, you know, our team is split between East Coast and West Coast. It's uh, maybe six or 6.30, you know, the day after basically the song's gone viral. I'm leaving the office and I get a phone call from our creative team in LA. And they're like, hey, we've got this kid. Are you familiar with him? I was very familiar with him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's going to be at Chipotle at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Can we, we need to come up with our ideas and figure out what we're going to go mm. do to shoot him and pull it together. Ended up reaching out to a creator who, you know, former day one or TikTok creator in his own right to come in and help us quickly ideate and then, you know, be on hand to shoot. And okay. we went in with, you know, two or three ideas. You don't know what you're going to get. It's young talent. How comfortable are they going to be in front of the camera? You know, mm -hmm. you look at the, the earnesty that came through in that first interview and song. It's like you yeah. want to create that again. Right. Um, but you're doing it in a, you know, a 40 minute window while the mm -hmm. kitchen's trying to prep for open. We had this really simple idea. Let's just have him go down the line, place his order and his or order is, is just corn. Um, and it had all the makings of sort of a great piece of content. Yeah, I, I love the content because it was that simple, yeah. right? Like it's, sh it's shot from the point of view of An a, 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 yeah. a Chipotle employee going through all the ingredients and then a voice out of frame is saying no, no, no to the yeah. sour cream, no to the, the black beans. But then when it gets to corn, that's when the reveal happens. And, um, you know, Tariq is revealed and one of the one of the best collabs that I've seen on the platform. Um, was it meant to always be that simple? You mentioned like there were two other ideas was it always supposed to be just like that very simple pov smartphone as soon as it was shot we knew that was going to be the one i mean mm. his reaction on the sort of pan up and seeing his face and you know done in basically one take like that felt like it was going to be it yeah. you know we didn't know it was going to take off as much as it did you know it's like this is just a fun thing for us to do super timely driving or participating in a cultural conversation you know originally it was just shot for tiktok we ended up posting it kind of everywhere and it yeah. had great viral success on basically every platform, but you know, the numbers all organic for TikTok are insane. I mean, it's 62 million views. It's like close to 10 million likes mm -hmm. over a quarter million people have shared it. And I think for me, that's the part I always look at. Like it's one thing to passively like, or to leave a comment, but the fact that, you know, a quarter million people decided I have to show this to somebody else. Yeah. It was, on, just, it was like, on the news. In. Yeah. It was insane. <laughs> so, uh, we actually saw a ton of people who discovered Tariq from the Chipotle content, mm -hmm. maybe weren't, you know, 
especially on some other platforms where they might not be on TikTok and weren't familiar with the song and hadn't reached out to you know other places yet. And it's awesome to kind of help grow his uh, his stardom a little bit. Yeah, I mean, this is a very I don't I don't want to miss out on the fact that this is a very quick turnaround time, you know, from the moment that you all decided to jump into the comments to working through the ideation and then actually shooting and like distributing the content. Talk to me about like the process of working with Chipotle to make sure that you were able to actually produce this in such a quick turnaround time. Yeah, from you know, noticing the virality to being live was, it's less than a day. It was, it was about 17 hours. Yeah. Um, but you know, I always say it took 17 hours and like seven years, you know, it took building the trust, building the relationship, you know, with Chipotle to be able to do that. And to have been on the platform for as long as we, we have been, you know, launched on, on TikTok in 2019 and really early there as a, as a food brand and as, you know, as QSR brand. And for us, just, we had gone through that building over time with with Chipotle. So there was the trust, you know, there was the sense yeah. that this thing was going to going to work. And, you know, the beauty of TikTok as well is it was a low risk. You know, if it honestly, if it didn't work out and it was just another sort of middle of the road, did 100,000 views, but helped mm -hmm. us join in a conversation, it would have been OK. You know, it would have been just one of these moments that, you know, we, we take a lot of at bats with Chipotle and you never know which ones are going to work. Yeah. This one just kind of knocked it out of the park. Yeah, I mean, this this one, like millions, tens of millions of yeah. views on TikTok alone, not including like, For you us, know, yeah. shown on the news and put on every, every other platform. Is there now like this extra pressure to like, you know, vet every single idea that comes through on TikTok now that, you know, you've had that success? Or do you see that with that success, there's even more trust to be able to move even quicker on future uh, yeah. work? Um, I think when the idea, you know, when the idea is good, the idea is good and everybody's kind of like can feel it and sense it pretty early on. And, mm -hmm. you know, we really look at ourselves as an extension of Chipotle's team. You know, we're, we are just one team. Um, it, whether it's those standups or brainstorming together or doing, you know, sessions quarterly to kind of sit down and look at ways to evolve and, and think about new ways to, to bring ideas for the platform. I think what we're seeing more and more over time with TikTok in particular is so much of the cultural conversations coming from the fan, coming from the creator, especially around a brand like Chipotle, we're one of the most talked about brands organically on the mm -hmm. platform. For us, it's, it's a lot of how do you identify and join in versus necessarily having to create everything from scratch. Yeah. When you, um, the thought process behind taking this, this viral moment sure. and turning it into an original piece of content, was there ever a thought around like, if we use this sound, we have to go through the whole process of clearing the the actual sound and going through legal and business affairs. Was that a consideration yeah, for you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're always kind of cognizant of that, you know, if you're mindful of sort of yeah. you know, making sure that you're, you know, crediting the original creator or at least, you know, getting the clearance if you, if you need to. Mm -hmm. um, and this just felt like a great way to work and build with Tariq versus just kind of jump on the back of uh, that rising star. Yeah, and I think one of the unintentional benefits of this whole thing is that you were able to bypass a lot of that, you know, yeah. business affairs process. And, you know, in my experience is working with creative agencies, that is a barrier, right? Sure. If you want to use a trending sound on the on the platform, you do have to make sure that you're going to the creator and yep. you're, you know, doing everything that you have to, to get clearances for that. But this was a great opportunity to create something original while also creating an even bigger impact for for Chipotle. So that's 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 great to hear. Um, we're actually going to take a break and then we'll be right back. Trends passing you by? Unsure which trend to hop on next? Do you need a trend compass? Navigate with the Trends Hub on TikTok Creative Center. TikTok is where trends start and where your brand can shine too. It can be a challenge to figure out how your brand fits in, but don't worry, we're here to help. The Trends Hub on Creative Center is your ultimate TikTok trend inspiration. It has real-time tracking tools so you can see what's trending now, and you can even look at trend reports on broader cultural shifts to plan content that's on trend for weeks, months, and even years to come. Sometimes it's a marathon, not a sprint. Want to know the most popular songs on TikTok in the past seven days? Done. There's a tracker for that. Need help proving the value of trends on TikTok? There are reports loaded with stats and insights that are free to access. That's right, free. You can even watch the hottest TikTok trends of the last week and sort by 
Making content that's on trend has never been easier. Get inspired with the Trends Hub on the TikTok Creative Center today. You mentioned a day one employee shot the the 13 second uh, corn kid TikTok. What's your what's your thought around talent and hiring for for TikTok content creation? Yeah, so the partner who shot that with us, um, or the employee shot that with us, uh, is a is actually a former day oneer, but was one of mm. the first day one employees that we had hired with a focus on this career path that we kind of built out an entire new trajectory around this idea of just being uh, creative. You know, really yeah. thinking about taking and hiring creators who really understand platform. You know, they've, they've grown up with these tools in their pocket, they get it. Uh, and bringing them in house and helping them to understand collaborating with brands, working with, working with strategists, working with producers, working with experts in other areas, you know, of the craft. and. Uh, over time, we've built that out into to really a full full team. So, mm. you know, right now we have about a half a dozen you know creatives on the team. Some that are you know stronger in traditional photography. Others that really understand short form video. Mm-hmm. Um, we try to have you know those those individuals in initial brainstorms all the way through execution. Yeah. And oftentimes they're pitching ideas, pitching it you know writing up a concept, pitching it to the client, and then the actual team or the lead producing producing that creative yeah uh in the case of uh of corn kid you know it was it just so happened that a creative that we had in new york at the time was on another production so this is mm-hmm. the beauty of dealing with like a last minute shoot you got to figure out right. how to kind of get it done and um we've had a couple of these these creatives go on to become pretty well-known creators in their own right you know they've taken what they've learned in time with us at day one and have graduated into their own careers. I still try to keep really good relationships with, with everybody. And, you know, this, this creator, uh, Fritz Bacon, he is a fantastic individual. He's worked with us on a number of projects since, since leaving day one, but Mm -hmm. you know, he's always, if I've got a project and I can't do it in house and it's not the right scale for a full on production company, but an individual is going to have the right sensibility of not just shooting for platform, but also how we work, you know, it was a a great fit. Um, And, you know, we talked a lot about, you know, kind of agencies and people at the beginning and, you know, agencies really are just people. And the work that we get to do is a reflection of the people we have, we have in the building. So for us to be, and to try to continue to be experts on TikTok, we need to have a team that really understands it, that lives and breathes it. Yeah. So uh, it's safe to say you're explicitly looking for short form, uh, vertical professionals that understand TikTok and, and trying to bring them into these account teams. More and more, yeah, trying to hire for that. And and they come from so many different backgrounds uh, of a couple that are stand-up comedians that really understand yeah. telling the stories in those short formats and have made their own TikToks before. And, you know, others that are incredibly strong as visual creatives or as, as filmmakers. You know, having that sense to understand taking an idea from paper to screen yeah. and what it takes to get there, more and more this next generation of creatives of the hands-on experience to kind of do that. And that's been really fun to kind of work with. Uh, and it changes, you know, for me, the way I think about producing stuff all the time, seeing how they might take an idea and bring it to life. Are you bringing these, these, uh, these people on, you know, more integrated campaigns or non-TikTok platform assignments? For them, I think that's the benefit of being at agency. You yeah. know, it's understanding um, what a bigger production beyond, you know, you and your phone or you and your, you know, own equipment might be. You know, what does it mean to creative direct a real production um, to be, you know, an art director on a, on a big shoot or a DP? You know, I think for them, they get to try their hand at a lot of different skills. You know, I'm sure you're all seeing this more and more. A lot of kids coming out of school right now, the number one job they want is to be a creator. I right. think agency is yeah. such a great environment to, to round out that skill set, mm-hmm. understand, you know, budgeting and timelines and working with clients. Um, you know, I talked about this former day one or before I, he and I still catch up a lot. What is so fascinating talking to him is like all the things that I never would have learned in school. I learned at agency in those you know few years that he was with us. And that allowed him to go on and kind of build a really successful independent career because he had the right foundation, the right backbone. And you know, it's a great place to learn. Following the success of, of the Corn Kit content, you paired up with another uh, content creator that's been taking TikTok by storm. I'm talking about Keith Lee yep. and Alexis Frost. So 
for for those that don't understand, there was a there was a viral TikTok that that uh, that happened on the platform about Alexis Frost reviewing a steak fajita quesadilla that she you know created on her own, and Keith Lee stitched the video and tried it, and it just took off, and you have thousands of customers around the country going to Chipotle trying to order this option that's not on the menu honestly creating kind of like a <laughs> like a yeah. like an issue for for your, your yeah, in-store employees one of those good challenges you know yeah. it, it came out of uh yeah TikTok to to table um <laughs> really interesting because you had this happens all the time people love hacks you know for different restaurants and, and Chipotle has been especially on TikTok, there's a lot of that, you know, it's like, I want to make, um, I'm going to blend queso and, you know, this hot sauce and we're going to call it dragon sauce. And they're like, yeah, that might come from a fan, but it's like a really easy customization. Mm -hmm. This one was unique. You know, the quesadilla has been, um, relatively new menu item. Um, but what Alexis decided to order was something that you couldn't order in the app. The quesadilla is, you know, traditionally a, uh, app only order. Mm -hmm. So digital only order. A um, lot of reasons for it from, you know, operation perspective, but what she asked for, you, you couldn't actually go through a flow in the app and say, I want steak and fajita veggies. That, that's the hack she added. She basically just said, I'm going to pick my protein. I'm going to add these fajita veggies to it. Yeah. It is delicious, but it was the thing that, you know, it, it caused some challenges because there was no way to kind of get it. So she had to go into a Chipotle you know, butter up an employee there, ask for a thing that you couldn't get. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she and Keith are both very charming. So I think it's probably very easy for them to go in and like, you know, in the afternoon and kind of ask for this thing. But then as fans started to sort of ask for it, that's where the challenge kind of fell on us. So yeah. we were seeing all this chatter on TikTok and, you know, sometimes these things happen and you're sort of like, oh, this is a huge operational challenge. We might mm -hmm. not be able to do anything with this. We knew very quickly that this was something we we're going to have to figure out how to get ahead of. Yeah. Um, Instead of making it go away, right? Yeah, there, like was, into there it. was no making this go away. It was, <laughs> it was just going to happen. Um, you know, Keith, his star has grown a ton, but he was already pretty prominent, you know, when this happened kind of in December of 2022. Uh, you know, he probably had two or three million followers. He's what, 15 plus now, growing all the time. Yeah. And had built kind of a you know, notoriety around what he had done in the local market in Vegas for, for a number of restaurants. So we saw the potential of what that could be, but also just, he seemed like a really genuine guy as does Alexis. And you know, thought that'd be a really interesting way to kind of partner with them, but there was a challenge. So there was no way we we're going to be able to just like snap our fingers and turn this menu item on right away. There was a need to change some of the flow in the app, in the restaurants or employees that we had to train for it. Yeah. You know, it was a hundred thousand employees that had to go through training for it. Wow. 3,200 restaurants that, you know, from an operations perspective, there were adjustments that needed to be made to allow for this. Yeah. Um, and we had to kind of time it out. So you want the whole story? You want to go through step by step or just? Yeah, let's, yeah. let's go yeah, through yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, so we ended up going down to Vegas, sent one of the folks on our team um, to work with Keith and Alexis to kind of tease that this was coming. Mm -hmm. So, you know, went down there, shot in their car, really lo-fi. Hey, they were with the quesadilla. We've got it. It yeah. is delicious. It's coming. Uh, and then we got to work on operationally all the back end pieces of it, kind of getting it ready and, and able to kind of roll it took about two months you know so it ended mm -hmm. up being around march of uh of last year uh to sort of bring it bring it to market so you know two three months pretty fast if you're rolling out a new yeah. menu innovation across um, the entire country like. yeah <laughs> and uh you know we knew it was going to be big and hard to predict what it was actually going to do but ended up going back to vegas partnered with them both to kind of unveil uh the quesadilla and you know took it a step further. So, you know, they both kind of, we ended up giving them both uh, kind of their own branded Chipotles in Vegas. So yeah, changed I love the sign that, yeah. uh, to Chipotle and Chipotle Lex, um, mm -hmm. really just leaning in on the partnership. I mean, you couldn't ask for like better collaborators and, you know, they, they talked about it on their channels. Keith was serving them up to, you know, folks in, in Vegas and drove a lot of really good, you know, conversation and, and storytelling online. But actually changed the business in a lot of ways too. You know, basically overnight doubled quesadilla sales and, you know, Chipotle ended up having two of the largest digital sales days ever uh, in the days that followed the launch of the quesadilla. Wow. I mean, I love this example because it's so much bigger than TikTok. Yeah. I mean, 
the 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 trend started on TikTok, sure. right? And that's where you got the insight, and that's where you learned that you wanted to turn this into a permanent or temporary at the time menu item. But then you were able to actually go in store and create name changes and create new names for the for the menu items. What was day one's role in all of that? In the middle of it all, you know, <laughs> I, our team. Um, there's a creative on our team, Andrew Downing, who really like sat in the middle of this whole thing, super built a really close connection and relationship with Keith throughout the process, like going down there in the early days, then back down with the, you know, the extended team and, you know, our Chipotle team, another creative in LA, Ali Comingor, you know, they were down on the ground, just really trying to, uh, to maximize the moment. But from a narrative and storytelling perspective, like really trying to connect the dots everywhere, yeah. thinking about not only what's this gonna look like on TikTok, What's this look like in an email for someone who's maybe never even heard of this and, and TikTok and working closely with that team? Mm -hmm. uh, what's the PR comm strategy around this? How are we branching this out to be you know, even bigger and wider? Because then it became not just this TikTok menu innovation, it became really a Chipotle wide menu innovation. Yeah. So we had one story we could tell here, and then how do you bridge that into you know, all the other places where I'd say the ball cover fans at that time maybe weren't familiar with Keith, and there was you know, some storytelling to do there. Yeah, this this entire campaign and or not campaign this 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 case study really feels like a great example of TikTok uses research and development mm. for for product innovation. What was the the biggest takeaway or the biggest insight that that day one got from this entire experience? Yeah, I mean, there's a um, really I think all the time we talk about it, you were trying to fuel the fandom. You know, so you try and find these super fans and you want to supercharge everything that they're sort of putting out into the world. Uh, you know, not every single thing that we see on TikTok do we necessarily want to pour a ton of gasoline on and, and turn into a big moment. But, you know, this was a chance to, to do something really different with not only two great creators, but really diehard invested communities around them. Mm -hmm. And I think it just created a ton of new fans for Chipotle in the process. Yeah. You said something interesting about not pouring the gasoline on everything that happens yeah. on TikTok. How how are you discerning what to go after? You obviously struck yeah. gold with these two examples, but how how did you know? There's a natural virality that you see in certain pieces of content. You see sort of where, you know, everyone's kind of drawn to an idea or a thing. You can kind of feel it starting to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of a time where maybe we saw something happening and decided to not not lean into it. You know, there's there's a there's maybe a million reasons why you wouldn't. Um, you have something else kind of going on at the time. You can't put the investment or the resources towards it. I could see something like that kind of happening, but you know, more and more often, if there's a community or a fan base there, and we can sort of bridge them into being, you know, Chipotle fans. You know, fans first and foremost. If they yeah. become customers, great. But if they're fans of the brand, they respect sort of how we show up, what we do, who we work with. I mean, those are huge building blocks towards, you know, building a sort of iconic brand over time. Yeah. Outside of the the quesadilla case study and the corn kid uh, activation, what else are you working on with that Chipotle or have worked on with Chipotle that you've, you're excited about or proud of? Yeah, it's it's a funny feed to go back and, and scroll through because it, it brings up like a ton of memories of, you know, a really silly idea, getting pitched, becoming real. Uh, I've loved some of the things we've done for Burrito in, over the years. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we worked with Pablo Rochat to produce a, a short film you know, for Burrito last year. It was really fun. Um, you know, we talked about building a team that understands TikTok. The creator on the team in LA, he has gotten really into building original songs you know, for some of the brands that we work with. Yeah. So Sam McDonald, funny comedian, also you know, uh, garage band sort of music producer. And uh, he's produced, uh, he made a track for um, free, quesos on, free queso on Mondays. So a queso <laughs> hack, really silly. Just did another one uh, recently about the corn lad. So continuing down the, the path with, uh, with fun corn videos. But, you know, we talked about sort of the challenges of licensing, you know, mm -hmm. different sounds. And more and more we're experimenting with that. How do we create our own sounds and, you know, put stuff out there that may feel a little weird, a little wacky and, and see if, you know, the fans take off with it. Yeah, we, we had an episode earlier in the season where we talked about music licensing yeah. and the power of custom songs and original music on the platform and how, how brands can sort of get in on that and be able to produce something a bit quicker than if they're trying sure. to license yeah. a more popular track. In terms of your actual creative process, has have these comp, like campaigns or 
pieces of content influenced any big changes in the way in which you would like you approach these creative projects? Yeah, I think there's a few kind of big overarching rules or, or thoughts that we have with with TikTok in general, and, it, and it's impacting how we think about social overall. So, you know, the old school idea was you build a playbook, you have your franchises, you're sort of doing the same thing over and over and over again. We've shifted and really have built this idea of a philosophy over a playbook. So having a really clear intention, North Star, of what you want to be known for, how, who you want to reach, the type of conversation you want to have, building from there is a starting place. So for Chipotle, it's all about being real. You know, they have their above the line campaign, sort of tagline is uh, for real. Early on when we saw that our thought process was, what's it mean to be real on social? So how do you sort of bring that into different channels? And it changes all the time. When, you know, back in the day, I was building a lot of uh, static meme posts and sort of leaning into that format. Yeah. Now it's it's collaboration. It's working with with creatives and, you know, bringing hacks, you know, into our feed and really communicating the way that our fans sort of talk uh, and reflecting that as much as we can and joining in. So that's sort of one part. Then for TikTok, we really think about it as a complete ecosystem. So mm -hmm. our feed's really important, but everywhere else we show up is, is equally important, you know, yeah. whether that's, uh, you know, commenting on other videos, the collaborators we work with, seating. I mean, there's, there's so many different pieces to it, and it's so much more uh, vibrant and multifaceted than, than other social platforms. Um, and then, you know, from a process perspective, speed is such a huge part of success on, on TikTok. So mm -hmm. we've really built, um, you know, starting with our own take on, you know, kind of inspired by a writer's room, more traditional Hollywood writer's room. How are we bringing a ton of voices together, letting them sort of share what's on their unique FYPs? Let's all get inspired by what everyone else is seeing yeah. and think about how we come up with ideas that we can, you know, turn on and execute quickly. You mentioned a lot of gems there, and I, yes, I think that three the big things, no, yeah. like just over the course of this entire interview, that I think is going to be very helpful for creative agencies to start creating more impactful content on the platform. If you had one piece of advice for creative agencies that are looking to specifically lean into trends mm -hmm. on TikTok, what would that advice be? Just gotta start making stuff. You know, I think it's really easy to overthink it. Um, you need a great partner on the other end who is willing to go on the journey with you and, and collaborate. And then you're not gonna, you know, find a corn kid every every week, every month, maybe maybe not even every year. Um, but the more often you're able to kind of look for what the conversation is, the pockets of the, you know, platform that you want to join in on, start making stuff, start working with um, your in-house team, start working with creators. I mean, it's a great way to really build authentically as well. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah, thank appreciate you. it. Any any final thoughts you want to share? Yeah, first of all, thank you so much for, for having me here. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I just want to give a shout out to the Chipotle team. You know, I think it's really a partnership in doing this kind of work. TikTok is, uh, it's alive, it's ever evolving. You need a client that's willing to kind of lean in and, and keep up. And, mm -hmm. you know, from the top down, they've been great partners and, and really excited to see what we build together next. Thank you, Jamie, for sharing your story with us. And if you work at a creative agency and you're looking for support on your next TikTok project, scan the QR code on the screen or tap the link in our description to connect with the Creative Agency Partnerships team. And don't miss out on upcoming episodes of Made for TikTok Talking Creative. Hit that subscribe button. I'm Jordan. Thank you for tuning in.